Hey guys, welcome back. As you all know, the containerizations and microservices are highly getting adopted amongst the companies. And most of the companies are adopting the Kubernetes orchestrations. So today in this video, we'll see how we can implement a Java applications into the Kubernetes cluster. So before implementing the Kubernetes cluster, let's see what are the things we are going to learn under the setups. If you have not yet subscribed my channel, please do subscribe now so that you'll get notified when I add more videos in my channel. So here, I have taken one full stack applications, okay? So here we have the applications, the front end is designed in Java, and we have the database, which is written in MySQL. So the full application stack, if you see here, we have created one Kubernetes cluster where we are going to create a pod which will deploy the UI applications, and another pod which will contain the database. So in this Kubernetes cluster, we'll have two pods. One pod will contain our application and another pod will contain our database. And we'll see how this entire Kubernetes cluster and this entire applications, how we can access from the outside internet. Okay, so what are the objects? Let's see what are the objects we need to create as part of this project. Okay, so these are the objects which I'm going to create and show you here the namespace, config map, secrets, and persistent volume deployment and services. So these are the six objects which I'm going to show you in this entire project. So let's see how all the setups we have done, and I'll I'll, I'll just show you the step-by-step -step process to create the objects and to create uh, the image files of the Docker image files to create all Kubernetes object one after another. And before doing this, make sure that you should have installed the Kubernetes cluster and the kubectl commands to be there in your server, in your machines, right? So uh, assuming that everything is installed, so let's go to the uh, code, whatever we have written, the manifesto files for each object. So I have created a folder, if you see here, uh, so KHS, and here we have, uh, I have written all the files over here, okay? So I'll go through each object as per the documents, as per the things we have, uh, I just sorry, right? We'll just go with namespace first and then config, map, secrets, persistent volume, deployment, and services. Okay, so before that, what we have to do actually, uh, I'll show you how we can create the images, right? With that image, we are going to create the container, the pod, right? So if you see here, uh, we have one called Docker file um, hyphen MySQL, and the other one is the Docker file hyphen chunk. Let me show you quickly what these two Docker file contains. If I just do cat and Docker file, uh, let's do Docker file chunk at first. Okay, so it's very simple uh, image Docker file, which contains uh, actually base image, I'm using the Tomcat 8.5, right? And there is a module, there is a copy command I'm using to copy the login web app.war, which is nothing but our applications, okay? The entire applications, the product, which I'm going to uh, deliver or copy to the Tomcat web apps folder. And then with this, I'm just setting a working directory, from where we'll just do uh, work on, and then the command which will uh, execute the Catalina.sh, which will start up the Tomcat server to run. So this is a very simple uh, image file or Docker file I've created, which will create our image, the Tomcat image. Similarly, I have also one uh, image file, Docker file for the MySQL for the database image. Let's see that one, what it contains. It will be very simple. Uh, it's just having this MySQL uh, 5.7.28 versions, right? The base image. And on top of this image, I'm just copying the, the DOM file, which is the SQL file to create the database and the table structure, okay? And uh, what I'm doing here, I'm just copying that to the container, to the Docker entry point in db.t folder. So what is this actually? Uh, it is the folder where uh, whatever you copy, write the script and the, the statements and it will get executed when a container uh, kickoff or starts, right? So what you can see here, I have this under DOM, I have this particular SQL file. So let me show you what exactly this SQL file contains, right? Let's copy this particular and you can see here, 
we ha I have the dump folder right here on the top. Now, if I just do cat with the dump folder or directory and then the SQL file. So you can see here it's very simple. Uh, let me clear it out. And if you see here, just creating a table. That means just creating a table. So as part of the database creations in the manifesto file, uh, DB file, right? Uh, there I will create the database. And here I'm just using this term file. I'm just creating a table having these uh, the the schema is uh, whatever it says like right ID first name last name email username password and registration date. Normally to say user database. Okay, user table which I'm going to create as part of the pod creations. It will automatically get created. Okay, so that's what exactly what about the Docker file, the images, and all this, right? So let me show you what are the else I'm going to write, right? As for the, this diagram, right? Uh, we have to create this object namespace, config map, secret. Let's serially go through each of these, and uh, I'll just explain you, and then execute those commands to create those objects, right? Let's go with the namespace first, right? So if I just show you here, I have just YAML file is written, right? Namespace definitions.yml. Let's see what this namespace looks like. Uh, it's very simple. As you guys know, for namespace, the API versions will be v1, the kind I've just given namespace, metadata, I've given a name as Dave. So it will create a Dave namespace. And you uh, definitely you should know, right, what is the namespace or what is the usage of this namespace, okay? So I'm not going to explain you all these things uh, in this video, but however, I'll just show you what and how I have written these namespaces and uh, what exactly it looks like, right? So how will execute? So this is a very simple namespace I have created, right? So if I just do kubectl command, right? kubectl get namespace, right? If I just kubectl get namespace, let's see. Uh, we have default namespace, kube load uh, list, kube public, and kube system. But we don't have a dev namespace available. So what we can do here, let's create a dev namespace, right? So I'll do kubectl create, right, hyphen f, and just provide the file name here. So this is the one way to create a namespace. And the simplest way to create namespace will be uh, kubectl namespace create and just give a namespace name to get directly. But if you just create through manifesto file, you can just track the versions and any updates, anything uh, through that one, right? So let's create. So what is this? The dev namespace is created. If I do kubectl uh, git namespace here, or you can just give the sorter form is ns, and it just gives us the dev namespace here. 10 seconds ago, it's created. So we have the dev namespace now. So as for the objects we have written here, let's go ahead and understand what is this config map and how it is written, and let's execute it, right? So the config map, uh, if I just open the file, right? Uh, if you just go here, we have this config map, mysql.yml file, right? Let's go ahead. Uh, if I just open this, let's do cat here, config map. I can MySQL. So this config map, uh, what is the API version is v1, uh, kind will be your config map. The kind will be your config map and metadata will be uh, the name, whatever you provide. So here I've given us DV config and the namespace under which namespace do you want to create. So if you don't provide the namespace over here, what will happen? It will create under the default namespace. Okay, so make sure that you provide the exact namespace where you want to create your the entire project you are going to execute, right? So I have given us name namespace. And similarly, the data sections you have to provide what data or these are the variables. Okay, these are the variables, MySQL database variables. So what is it's written here? It's a MySQL underscore service underscore host, which is nothing but your host name. So you have written as MySQL TV hyphen service. And here, MySQL database, I have given us DevOps class, or MySQL Azure, I have given us my name and here. 
Okay, so you clearly understand how the config map. So the config map which contains the variables in Kubernetes. So whatever the uh, variables you want to pass or inject um, in the deployment file or any file you want to use in that object. So you have to use config map in the Kubernetes. So similarly, uh, we have the other object is called the secret, right? So as you see, the config map contains the variable sites. So similarly, the secrets, whatever it contains, it contains all variables, but secretly all are the encrypted. So you cannot see whatever the data has been given. So let me show you how the secret file looks like. Okay. So I'll just use same thing secret here. API version is v1 kind is secret here kind is config map but here in the kind whatever of object it is secret and the metadata i've just given a name here the metadata sections are given the name as tv config over here is given as tv secret it's up to you what name you make sure you keep it in the dev namespace in the data sections i have just here a mysql user but the password is given under the secret object as the passwords are the case, uh, like the sensitive informations, like uh, the secret should contain all the sensitive informations which should not be uh, visible to the naked eyes, right? All these things should be uh, kept under the secret object. So, so here, my SQL password, and I have just given uh, a string which is encrypted, the passwords, and that will automatically get uh, decrypted while we create the objects and use in the Kubernetes. Okay. Now uh, we see here uh, how it looks like, and this is uh, uh, have given uh, the base 64, which is the encryption method is used. Okay. Now how to use this secret? So you can use uh, like same thing, keep CTL, okay, and create. Type in f, give the secret file name. Secret. That's it. So what will happen? It will just create the secret. So let's see here uh, what happened. We just created the config map, but we have not checked whether the config map is created or not. How do you check this one? Keep the chill. Uh, we can just do keep the chill, get config map. Get config map. So uh, it gives a name as keep root CIT, but it does not give a name as DB config. So how you get that? So if you see here, uh, we just executed kubectl get config map. So what happens here? We have not explicitly assigned or given dev namespace, right? So by default, it shows the config map available from the default namespace. Okay. So let's do this one, but this time pass namespace type in dev here. Okay. So here we can see here, uh, whenever we do just secret, we can find this DB secret available. But however, we are not able to find the config map. So if you just little go up, we just see this file, but we have not executed this file, right? The object is not in created. So let's first create the object, keep it here, create and have an F config map file. So our config map is created. Now if we do here, get config map and dev namespace equal to dev here. So we can see here, we have this db config created. So we have this db config and db secret, both objects config map and secrets created. So as per the document, let's move on and create the persistent volume. So if you just go here and just check the persistent volume. So we have this volume, uh, persistent volume file, which is called uh, MySQL pb.yaml. I hope you guys would have uh, know like what is this persistent volume and what is the usage. So basically, the persistent volume used to store the data, right? Used to store the data, all the pod or container data into the space, into the local or into the storage where you can persist the data, right? So in case there is a problem with the uh, container or the pod goes deleted accidentally and you lose all the data if you have not assigned a persistent volume, right? If you have not assigned uh, the persistent storage. So the storage data, whatever the data will be created by a pod and uh, container will get stored into that volume. And in future, if you need to refer that, you can just go ahead and refer that particular volume, okay? 
Now what I can do here, so let's see what this persistent volume YAML file or manifesto file looks like. So if I just do cat uh, MySQL TV, right? So what I have written here, I have, you can see here uh, in this particular manifest file, I have written two objects. One will be persistent volume and the other one will be persistent volume claim. So what is this persistent volume and this persistent volume claim? So as you know, this persistent volume, I have to create a volume where we store the order container data inside it, right? So the API version is the V1 kind is persistent volume. So then what is this persistent volume claim? So in Kubernetes, right? There could be, there might be multiple volumes created by multiple teams, or even in your project, you might have created multiple volumes with multiple sizes and all, right? Or the host path and everything. And while creating the object, you should claim that which particular volume will be used. So you must have to, if your volume is created, you must have to claim it. Okay. So here, if you see the metadata I have given uh, as it is like, uh, the name as MySQL PV volume and tape and labels you have given this as type local. Similarly, after these two types of data API versions, kind, metadata, we can see here another options which uh, the part, the spe specifications, okay, spec. The storage class name, I'm just going to give it manually, manual and capacity. I've just given is the storage two gigabyte, two gigabyte of storage it will just, and we can, just create it as for your requirement, right? Your application storage, the container, um, whatever the data you get storage, you have to just provide it. Access modes, we can go through this persistent volume in Kubernetes manual. You can find that there will be different type of uh, access modes available. So one of these is the read write ones, which will be used as part of this. And the host path have just given this particular uh, path, which will be used uh, as the volume. Okay, let's modify a little this path because this path, if you see here, is given something which is where the local path which is not available here. So what I can do here, I can just simply create uh, a path in this particular home directory. Okay, let me just go through uh, in, to open it in the VI editor. So I'll just go to here in the path section. And and just remove this part and quickly write it for Ubuntu. Okay, and let's remove this Kubernetes part also. So I'll just create Kubernetes as volume. Okay, part will be stored in the volume. So and similarly, if you just go to the persistent volume claim here. And we have this metadata, and under this metadata sections, we have uh, just given the MySQL name. Remember, guys, whenever writing, make sure that object name, the kind, should be in camel case. Okay, persistent volume P caps here, V caps and C caps. Okay. Similarly, there are in the persistent volume also P caps and V caps, right? So you just go here and uh, the specification storage, whatever is given here, uh, just given manual read ones. Resources, request, storage here, capacity we assign in persistent volume as two gigabyte and the same two gigabyte we also requested to and also we claimed it, okay? So two gigabyte is claimed. Now, what will happen? I just gave the volume name as home Ubuntu uh, volume, okay? Let's save this particular file, good. Now, how will create this? Let's use kubectl create hyphen f, and volume. Let's see. So we can see here uh, these two volumes are now created. Two volumes are now created. Now let's see uh, the rest of the objects, but our other objects are there. So we have deployment and services. Let's go with the deployment. This will be actually you need to understand what exactly the deployment is and how you have to write a deployment file in order to deploy your applications, right? So let's see the deployment files here. We have two deployment files. I have written two de uh, deployment YAML files. One is for MySQL, another is for UI, the Tomcat somewhere, right? So let's open one first. I'll just open with uh, 
deploy definition, right? Deploy definition. Let's open with Tomcat YAML. So if you see here, uh, the rest of the object, whatever I showed you, it was the API version was v1. However, here the API version is apps v1. Apps v1. And the kind is deployment, decaps, the metadata, whatever you're just going to give it here, the Tomcat web development is up to you, but and make sure the namespace you have given us, Dave, because all other objects we have created under the Dave namespace. Now, uh, the labels here, uh, based on the labels, actually the labels and selectors, if you see here, uh, here I've given the labels and the same selectors being used at the uh, database objects, okay? Let me, the labels I've given us, uh, Come at web app and specifications. You have I have spe specified here this Tomcat web pod app, Tomcat web app front end and all right. So and you can see here these are the templates. This is the specifications under the tem template what we are going to use for the containers for the pod. What we are going to use for the pod. This template on this metadata information so is about the pod. And here, under this uh, template, we have another specifications uh, which relates to the containers because the pod contains one or multiple containers inside it. So, in our case, here I have only one container that is the Tomcat Wave container we are going to deploy it into this pod. So, here the Tomcat Wave I, we have given the name and the image, right? So, which image? This particular image, which uh, being used as uh, Docker for Renji and just using login web app 11. Okay, so just before I showed you, right? Just before I showed you the Docker file, with this Docker file, you can create those images. We can create those images. But uh, you know how we'll create these images by Docker? Build command, right? By Docker build command. It's very simple. Just use Docker build command hyphen G and then provide this file name. Then it will create the image. But in our case, if I just, just open this file, you can see here I'm just using this from my Docker for NG, which is nothing my Docker Hub registry. So from the registry, I'm just getting this login web app colon 11, which is the image login web app. The 11 tag or the version I'm going to download and use to create the pod with this particular image. And similarly, if you see here the replicas, how many applications I just want to get it at two. Two replicas means two pods will get created and it has given the selectors as match labels the front end. If you see here the labels I have given as front end. Similarly, under replicas, I have given the selectors and it is matching the labels as front end here. So type is front end. So it will create similar two replicas, two similar parts. So it will create two similar parts as the front end. Okay. Now you understood about the front end deployment part, right? Now let's move on to the database deployment. Let's see what it is looks like. If I just go to the MySQL DB here again, apps versions and apps uh, slash v1 by bi version deployment. Here I've given a MySQL DB deployment dev and labels I've given as MySQL DB, but type is backend. Any name you can provide. I've just given a type as backend here. And uh, then things the specifications under my, uh, the templates for pod templates you have to give. Uh, labels have given as backend here and some specifications for the container. Some specifications are given for the container. So these particular specifications, whatever you are seeing, right? These specifications is nothing but your database container related, right? Here again, I'm using this particular image from the registry, right? So if I just log into my registry, right? Let's go to the Docker of Okay, and if you just go to the Docker Hub and search for that particular uh, Docker for NG, right? If it is already logged in, I can say, yeah, it's already, it's not there. So let's search for Docker for NG, okay? Docker for NG here. And you'll find uh, lots of 
images will be available here. See, for Docker for Ranjit, we have this login web app, which I'm going to show you the demo, right? If I just click it here, you'll see there will be multiple tags available. Just go to the tags. See, we have multiple tags available, but I'm using this uh, 11 tags, okay? 11 tags for my login web app. Similarly, I have also one MySQL tag will be there. MySQL images will be there, right? So let's search for uh, this particular, and if I just here, see MySQL. So if I just go here, the MySQL part will have similar 10 and 11, all these tags available, okay? Now, if you go here, uh, you can see this Jaffa Ferenci and MySQL 11 tag I used. And here the container ports is used as 3306, which is the default port of MySQL. And environment from, this is most important because there are a few environment variables being used in this config map, right? So if you remember, I had given the config map as dbconfig, right? So environment from config map reference dbconfig and secret reference is it should follow this db secret so through this particular objects whatever is getting referred here environment from those data will get injected while the mysql database object is gets created this particular deployment file we execute similarly the volume points the volume mounts right the volume we have created the persistent volume right this is the name uh, mysql persistent store is given and the mount path of this particular container or the pod you can say right var leave mysql and the volumes which the claim you can see here persistence volume claim whatever then under the volumes i'm just giving a claim name which is nothing but the claim which we had created the mysql pb claim so that will get assigned here and here, I'm not just going to create uh, multiple replicas in the database. I've created only one replica, one port for the database will run, and it is the matching the labels as backend only. Okay, so it's very clear now. Now let's save this particular file. Okay, now let's go ahead and create this particular deployments. Let's go ahead and create this deployment. So what will happen here? Let's see if we just use keep ctl create type in f and give suppose first let's go ahead and create the tomcat deployment which i entered so it says what tomcat deployment is created similarly let's go ahead and create mysql tb as well right so let's use keep ctl create and type in f Give the deployment name. So here, MySQL DB deployment also created. So let's see what are the deployments we just created. Use kubectl get deployment. Get deployments, and you have to provide the namespace. That's why it says no resources found in the default namespace, right? We have not explicitly assigned a name. Namespace equal to suppose day. So we have this two deployment is created now, right? So you can see here up to date two available also two and one databases and all, right? So for this board, let's see the command to see all the objects, right? So if I do keep CTL get all under namespace date. See, if I just give under namespace date, if I see all the objects, whatever the objects, we can see here there are three pods, two the replicas, whatever for Tomcat and one for MySQL DB. Uh, so here deployment objects, their pod, these are the pod names, whatever the pods are running, and here the replica sets, everything is uh, are running here. Okay. So now everything, almost everything, we have done all setups. Right. So, what are the objects we created? So, let's go to the documents here. So, we have created namespace, config map, secret, persistent volume, and deployment. So, let's see now. So, we have created the deployment, right? Then, how to access the applications, right? So, now the container, the port, or the port, whatever we have created, is not exposed to the outside, right? So, to in order to access the applications. 
which is running inside the container and the container inside the pod to access that we should expose the container port or the port port to the outside wall by using the services right so there are different services are in kubernetes but i am going to use the load port service which we'll see this one how we can use it right so i have written a manifest file for uh, load port for the service so if you see here i have two services being created one is for ui and the other one is for mysql let's do service first for ui okay so if you see here for ui i have used here api versions v1 and the kind is service metadata has just given a name specifications the type i've given it as here load port so i'm going to use the service the load port service and here the target port right 8080 tomcat's default uh, port is 8080 and uh, the node port is 30008 so what is this 30,008? Why we have given this 30,008? Remember, the node port has a port range. So if you just go to the Google and search for uh, node port service port range, okay? So see, uh, what it says, it gives from 30,000 to 32,767. In between, you have to choose one port range and you have to whitelist that one. Okay, so for that, I have just used 30,008 and make sure this 30,008 is also whitelisted in your server. The cluster where you have created is whitelisted. Okay, 30,000 in the security group, it is whitelisted. If you are using EC2 instances in the security group, you have to whitelist. If you are using any different Local machines for the cluster setup, you have to set up accordingly the firewall setup. Okay, now what happens here? Uh, so, here the particular service has been uh, created now by using this particular uh, service object like Tomcat service. So, how we create this one? Uh, let's before creating this, let's see what the uh, MySQL service looks like. If I just do service and MySQL. And here it will be simple one, same, and the port is 3306, okay? And here if you see here, after this port, we have used this selector, right? To select this particular applications or object or form or the port, right? The front end, right? This type of selector type of again front end, the match labels, whatever we had created the front end. So this particular service will get mapped or get attached to that particular object. And here we have also uh, the selectors given us a backend, right? And the match labels, the labels, whatever we have given that object, uh, if you have seen, right, in the deployment and uh, those particular config map and secrets, right? Those, it will get selected over here and it will get connected to each other, right? By using match labels and selectors. So let's go ahead and create the services. It will be the same command you have to use, kubectl uh, service, Okay, hyphen yeah, and this give the file name. So we suppose uh, UI. First, let's give the UI service. Uh, error known command service. Okay, so here what? Sorry, it should have create not service. So yes, create here. Okay, create. Let's go ahead. So service is created. Now let's go ahead and create the database service. So it should be MySQL. Not that, not support. Okay. So what happened here? We have now the MySQL service is created. Okay. This MySQL service is created. So once the services are created, so in order to access the applications in the pod, so what have to do? We have to do the port forwarding. So whatever the port we just used in this particular node port service, and this particular port should be get forwarded to access the applications running under this port right so what i have to do you have to use kubectl the port forward command kubectl port forward hyphen hyphen address just giving the public right and here i just used sbc tomcat service and the name so let me just uh, clear it out this particular things and it will be in below so if i just here uh, service and which service I'm going to forward this particular Tomcat service, 
Okay, let's see uh, what is the services available, right? So if I just do kubectl get svc sucker for what the service. So okay, so by default it gives the cluster IP services, but we need to check it in our namespace, right? Namespace. Sorry, there is a typo. So here we have this Tomcat service. This particular we have to do the port forwarding, right? So let's go ahead and queue. Let's copy this particular part. So address public and just forwarding this service with namespace and the dev and port number 30,280. Let's hit enter forwarding. So you can see here this public, this particular things gets forwarded to this under port. H zero eight G. Okay. Now what we can do? How will access this application? So let's simply go to the cluster which you have used. So this is the IP address my for the Kubernetes cluster. Let's go open it, put it there, and provide thirty thousand thirty thousand eight. Okay. And what is the application name? It is login web app. Hit enter. See, we can successfully connect to our application. So our pod is running there in the backend. Uh, we have the, in the backend, we have a database, which uh, I'll show you uh, how we'll register it and then directly connect. So the database is already been activated. Let's see whether our UI, whatever we can able to access it, whether able to connect to the database or not. So let's go to the register part here. And here, just I'll give as uh, Ranjit, so I email address, username Ranjit, password. Let's give us Ranjit here. Submit. If everything good, so you can see here registration is successful. So the application is working perfectly. That means it's able to connect to the database and register ourselves. Let's log in. And with user ID Ranjit and password, let's give us Ranjit as well. Try to log in here. Wow. See, you can see here we are able to successfully connect to the database. Now we can see this particular login web app. And if you are using my uh, this particular project and everything actually, whatever the application, the package, the work file used. All the passwords and database, everything uh, was given in the packages, um, and I had built it with that particular uh, DB name and uh, packages and everything. If you need to change it accordingly, so you have to rebuild the applications. I'll just give you the application links, whatever I have kept in the uh, GitHub repository, so you can get all these links and you try to build in Jenkins or whatever build mechanism you use to build it. So you can do that and you can use that, modify it and use accordingly. So do practice and this will help you to learn the entire Kubernetes uh, things. Uh, if you guys, uh, see guys, I'm just providing the entire DevOps course. If you are interested to uh, join with me and to learn DevOps, uh, so the registration links are given below in the description. So you can just register with me and just learn the entire DevOps, how the DevOps works from the scratch. Hope this video will be useful for you and it will help in your career perspective. If you have any doubt or any concerns, please do write me in the comment section below. I'll try to answer your queries. If you have not yet subscribed my channel, please do subscribe now. Thank you. See you in another videos. Bye-bye.